we've done it. We've finally made it to the infamous episode 3 of The Acolyte. Boy oh boy, what a steaming pile of doggy doo. Nothing about this episode is cool or interesting. Nothing here expands the Star Wars universe in anything that comes close to a useful way. Nothing from episode 3 of The Acolyte will ever be referenced in any Star Wars product ever again. Episode 3 of The Acolyte gets a 3 out of 10. It was horrible. I hated everything about it, and everything in it. I'm going to just concentrate on the main points because otherwise I will be here all day and I don't want to waste my time on this garbage. Let's get stuck into it. Remember, May has a hit list of 4 Jedi and 2 episodes in she is halfway through her list. For some reason, she has to kill one without a weapon. One quarter of the way through the series and she is halfway through her list. There is going to be a lot of stalling. Flashback time! Brendock, 16 years ago. Young Osha is sitting under the poisonous tree that the poison that killed Master Torben came from. She's watching some jellyfish slash hummingbird type creatures. And she starts messing with them, pulling a force hold on them. But she lets them go after a second. May, on the other hand, continues the torture, and I thought this was going to explode in a fountain of glow stick gel. The girl seems to be having a dispute about doing the ascension ceremony. They get found out by their mum, who appears to be the same species as Darth Maul, a Zabrak or something. She's real horny. Meanwhile, a young soul is creepily peeping from behind a tree, not suspicious at all. The girls are led to a mountaintop fortress, which must be a couple of hours walk from any kind of tree sustaining zone. Wait a minute. There's something bothering me about this place. I know, this lesbian coven doesn't have a fire exit. Enjoy your death trap, ladies. Ironic, really. So Mother Coral is denying the girls instant gratification in the form of delicious spice creams and is instead punishing them for leaving the fortress unattended. But Mother Anasea wants the girls to eat as much as possible. Is she fattening them up for a human sacrifice? She's just testing her boundaries. Well, that's fine, but the boundaries have to be reinforced, you muppet. They're trying to make this place seem like a utopia, but it's just coming across as a place where actions have no consequences. These witches call the force the Thread, and they mock those that claim to wield it as a power. She then immediately wields it as a power, throwing Hadoukens like it's 1991. Here we get our first taste of the power of one, two, and many, although they are much less cringy than future iterations. Meanwhile, May and Osha are acting like little turds who definitely do not deserve a spice cream. Osha doesn't want to become a witch, but her mum says that the galaxy doesn't like women like them, with the power they have. What power? Because they seem to like Jedi women just fine. While they get their hair done, the girls argue over a book of drawings that Osha has. Osha wants to do things separate from May, and May doesn't like that. She's fully indoctrinated into the cult. Oh dear god, the ceremony has begun. The interpretive dance, no! Mother Anus player starts her speech about how they were driven away because they practiced the dark arts. Meanwhile, all this chick has been practicing is her bird calls. Then these all-female witches were gifted with some children, sure. Just stealing lines from weddings. What the Lord has joined together, let no man put asunder. Her name is May Ho? Bit rough. So we get the infamous Power of Many chant, and it's just ludicrous. How convenient that the oath says that upon her mother's death, she will continue her legacy foreshadowing much? I guess these witches don't believe in informed enthusiastic consent, and Verosha is going to get face blasted whether she likes it or not, until the Jedi arrive, just barely saving her from a sexually transmitted infection. Kermit the Frog informs them that the Jedi will be here at any moment. They will be here at any moment. Or was that Jordan Peterson? Trinity is alive again and has brought Sol, a youthful Torben, 
and are walking in clothes with a shaved head. So Trinity flat out lies. We're sorry to interrupt, we didn't know anyone was living on this planet. After Sol was stalking them in the woods, then she contradicts herself immediately by saying, we know you were training children. Did you think this planet was uninhabited or do you know they had kids? Which one is it? Then Mother Coral lies and says there are no children here. I guess she could be correct because now they're ascended, they become adults? Sol just hands a kid his lightsaber. That's like handing a random eight-year-old a loaded pistol. Mother Aina Slayer just straight up mind freaks poor Torben. Surely that's not why he spent 10 years meditating. Trinity says that they have the right to test the children, with her permission of course. Is it a right or do you need permission? Because those two things are mutually exclusive. If you have the right, you don't need permission. These advisors are morons. Who would miss the Jedi? Um, the entire Republic. You know, the ones that drove you to exile? So Mother Coral gave birth to the girls, but Mother Anus Flayer created them. Did she stitch them together with the thread? They do have the same haircut as Raggedy Ann. Then old lady squirrel face drops some truth bombs on them. The girls will either pass or fail. So true. Good plan. When they ask you a question, tell them the opposite. Do your mothers treat you well? Do they feed you? Do they give you a warm bed to sleep in? Kalnaka out here welding without any goggles. Torben taking blood samples without express written consent. Is that the crime he's so ashamed of? Are they not going to re-administer the test to May now that they know that they were told to take a dive? How does Osha even know what a Jedi is in order to want to become one? Haven't the witches only told her the bad side of the story? May comes up to Osha and mugs at her for passing the test. Anyone else seeing Will Smith in her face? Have we finally discovered the father? <laughs> You can't stop me leaving. Can so? How? I'll kill you! Yikes, what a psycho. May uses what appears to be an oil lamp in a temple that has electricity to set fire to Osha's book of drawings and sets the door alight, trapping Osha in a room. I guess the thread can't let you sense danger like the Force can because no one seems to notice that their stone fortress has been set alight. Luckily Osha manages to hotwire the wall, and the chevrons encoded and locked to open the iris. The fire spreads rapidly in this stone fortress, it's already on the upper level. May and Osha spot each other across a broken gantry, just as Sol arrives to rescue them. None of the other Jedi make it. They must be too busy slaughtering the witches in order for Master Torben to be full of regret. What have you done? 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 And bam, just like that, Sol has a new Padawan. And somehow May made it out alive after falling to her death, and she didn't starve to death or die of exposure. So the witch's coven is no more. The all-female cult that somehow managed to create life without the use of a male, although I do believe one of the females there does have the requisite genitalia to produce offspring. Hey. That's 2024. Women can have testicles, bigot. The allegation against this cult that they are producing offspring purely through the use of the force slash thread wasn't enough to raise an eyebrow among the Jedi. I guess it must be an everyday occurrence around these parts. Anyway, this episode was more unintentional comedy and cringe than any kind of thrills or adventure, so I'm sticking with the 3 out of 10 I gave it earlier. If they took the time to explore why these witches do things differently, or even give them time to explain what they do with their time, we might have had an interesting episode. But it's just glossed over to get to the interpersonal conflict. Thanks for watching. If you like what you saw, please consider subscribing. I release reviews occasionally when time allows, and a thumbs up would be a big motivator for further reviews. If you didn't like it, feel free to leave a thumbs down and let me know how I can improve in the comments below. Anyway, I'm Mixie, thanks for your time, and have a good one.